Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Mills, and I work for the town manager here in the town of Amherst. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council, and we are meeting remotely due to suspension of open meeting laws, which have been continued by our wonderful governor. Um, at this time, I would like to recognize the co-chairs, Matt Holloway and Julian Applegate. And we have pressed record. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst website soon and our YouTube channel as well. Take it away, co-chairs. Thank you, Angela. Okay, so that means we're off the hook. We no longer have to, to read the statement because Angela covered that. Thank you. So I guess we can we can do our, our roll call. Uh, Matt? Here. Thank you. Christy? Here. Thank you. Cody? I can't hear you. I guess you got to unmute. I'm here. Thank you. And Rachel? I'm here. Hello. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Matt, would you like to take it from here since you put the agenda together? Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to and glad we have a quorum tonight. Um, I do have uh, something to tell everybody tonight. I have decided to step down as a co-chair on the Cultural Council. Um, this is really just a, a question of my own time and, and what I'm able to you know, reasonably do uh, from day to day. And it's also, I think, just something that I've been mulling over for a while based on meeting facilitation. Um, I think, you know, for me, I, I, I'd be happy to sort of vote for um, Julianne or whomever, you know, gets nominated to be a, the chair, um, but I'm not going to be supporting co-chairs as a, as a uh, model. And of course, that's just one vote. So, you know, we could still elect co-chairs and that's fine with me, but I don't think that for me, um, public meetings run smoothly with, with two co-chairs. So I think I would, I would like to see ACC go back to a single chairperson. Um, and I would not take a nomination for that just to be, just to be clear. Um, but I think that would be a, that would that would benefit us as a as a facilitation move, since we are a public body and and you know we have public meetings and and so I think those go smoothly when when there's a chair who can recognize the speaker and um, so for those reasons and and just I think for for personal reasons uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know immediately step down as co-chair and sort of I think turn it over to the group to to take the next step. Well, thank you for all of your service, Matt. I. Um... You know, it, it's, uh, as we've said before, the uh, sheer volume of what we do here in Amherst um, is a lot more than than uh, cultural councils typically do. And it's it's been, you know, instrumental uh, to the entire group and certainly to me to have, to have had you co-chair along the way. So thank you for your service. Um, you can open it up to, to any discussion. Um, I was just wondering, does it make sense since ever since now electronic? Because I would imagine the way it has been is I see the amount of work that goes into this, you know, off me even. So my only concern is the work so see that we all volunteers we are not paid so you know I'm for it but just, you know being it to myself is so and easily to have two people run in the show. Uh, 
you know, I, I, it, it certainly has, has been helpful and, you know, it's, um, I, I'm, I'm not stepping down, you know, I, I, I'm not going to, um, you know, and, and we're at a time right now where, um, you know, we are somewhat in between, you know, grant cycles. So for, for the immediate, you know, few months, I, I, I think it's uh, manageable. Angela's actually been helping me out quite a bit with some of the uh, ad, admin paperwork. That said, Matt and I were elected as co-chairs. Um, so with Matt stepping down, you know, we can uh, reevaluate the whole thing. If someone else would like to, to be chair, I'd be happy to, to support you. Um, however, you know, it would probably be, be helpful to recognize if we don't have others who'd like to consider being chair or co-chair. Is there anyone who'd like to be chair or co-chair? Is there anyone who'd like to nominate one of your one of your peers here <laughs> for this exciting role? That that's fine as well. Um, I, I guess you know if yes, Rachel. Hi, I'm not nominating myself or anybody else here. I just yeah, careful for putting questions. hands up, right? <laughs> right. So first of all, I just wanted to thank you, Julianne and Matt, for having done all this work. I know it's a huge amount of effort on your part. And um, I guess my question is really just about procedure, because I guess this means automatically that Julianne is now acting chair. Is that correct? And as well as treasurer. Um, and how many vacancies do we have right now on the council? We have one official vacancy right now. Um, and I've asked Angela, you know, to provide us with the, the candidates that, that we could possibly consider. Uh, there's one person in particular that I had asked to apply who uh, is a um, wonderful community member, um, is... Uh, lives in Amherst and is is not from our country. You know, it just would be a great addition and a, and uh, an accountant. So pretty high level accountant. That's just one person. You know, we have to look at the whole whole list. And um, but uh, I, I would actively like to do that, Angela, when when we can um, make the time so that we can start seeing whom else we can bring in. And then it's kind of a rolling basis at all times as far as people rolling on and off. So it is something that we really do need to actively um, be inviting people to join us and actively reviewing candidates um, that are that are uh, that have put in paperwork to be considered. Angela, that you might be in the middle of dinner, but I think I think that's correct for where we are right this minute. I think it's. Um, Leia's position that's officially open. That's correct. Yep. We have one vacancy. And I know that you have more than one person that's applied since 2024 has started. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Yep. So I'm happy to run you that list. And I'm sorry it's taken so long. Okay. Did did that answer your question, Rachel? And yeah, I as you know, I'd be glad to uh help help folks ease on into working as treasurer and really frankly believe I've um Believe it or not, me as a fashion designer, this is not my strength, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'm leaving it in better um, condition, certainly than when when I joined several treasurers back. Yes, Matt. Well, I just want to point out that we do have um, one member who has not been to a meeting in about almost a year now, Kimberly, um, and then so Sylvie has not been in several months as well. So Angela, as you're sort of doing getting lists together, um, it might be wise to, you know, reach out to those two individuals and see if they want to continue on their terms or if they want to give over their seats to somebody who's uh, able to attend more meetings. Yeah. And just for clarification, and this is Angela speaking. So neither one has, both have missed three consecutive meetings or more. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I can address that with them and CC. Um, Julianne on those emails just to see where they are with their membership. That'd be great. So Angela, do you happen to know off the top of your head, or is anybody here, um, how many vacancies we're going to have this year? Like, um, So one? some terms expire at the end of June. I would have to look at the list to see which of you expire at the end of June. 
And we usually ask the chairs to reach out to their membership um, at the end of April to see what they know about open vacancies and people who are not wanting to be reappointed. Thank you. I could, I could just look on the website too. Yeah, thank you. Yep, sure. And, and just for others who aren't, um, you know, kind of in our email chains, we, you know, we, we have heard from Eleanor. Eleanor is, is uh, studying abroad and she did very kindly reach out um, to say that she could do the night shift along with Christy if, uh, if we absolutely had to have her for a forum. So thank you again, Christy, for, for joining us after hours here and it's certainly not our intent to keep you up all night. You look very relaxed. It must be going well. I'm just really tired. Okay. It's just been a long, a long work day. So, okay. So relaxed is more like on the verge of sleep. Okay. Uh, is, is there anyone uh, who has anything else that they, they'd like to comment on? And Angela, are we required to, to, to take a vote or um, just recognize that um, we're moving from a co-chair to a chair um, organization? Um, as one co-chair. So, yep. So you opened it up for nominations to replace um, the vacancy and co-chair that Matt has um, vacated. I I mean, if there's, if you want to have, and I think you opened it up for conversation or comment about this process, but yeah. if no one wants to serve as co-chair and no one has um, spoken against the idea of having a single, having you as the chair, then I feel comfortable moving forward with this format until there's a, a significant shakeup of the membership, which might happen at the end of June. Yeah. Yep. So if, if I mean, you could open it up again and ask for commentary or ask people to, you know, comment and take kind of like a, a an informal straw poll vote, or if you would feel more comfortable, Julian, you're totally within your rights to call for a vote of confidence, like a vote of confirmation of U.S. chair. Okay. Well, as Angela said, I'll, I'll open it up. Is there any further conversation and comments? Yes, Cody. Yeah, I was confused at first. I did know we opened it up for coaching discussions. That being said, I would be interested, but if we think a single chair is more like the way we want to go, I'm again all for that. It, it's certainly something I'm 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 willing to try, um, and you know I, I'm pretty transparent and open. So, um, you know, as far as probably the most immediate thing, um, I, I can I can just take care of that for the time being. And you know, I s certainly don't don't want it'd be wonderful to, to to serve with you, Cody, and yet wouldn't want to have to drop things on you in the middle of the semester and all all that. So. Um, do appreciate it. So it would be appropriate to, for, for me to make a motion to sure. for a vote of confidence for Julianne as acting chair until we as a group decide how to move forward. Is that an appropriate motion? Sure. Um, Rachel has been um, to bring uh, this. Oh, there's, you have another comment, Cody? No, I second the motion. Okay. Uh, I'll take a roll call of the vote. Christy? Um, I support continuing on with Julianne. I think that would be great. Thank you. And Matt? Yes. Thank you. And um, yes, I will vote to continue on <laughs> rather than, yeah, thank you. 
Okay, so then thank you all. Um, and, and please, you know, reach out to me directly anytime or feel free to, to speak uh, out as to the effectiveness of, of our approach as we go along. Okay. Um, as far as the agenda, um, did we need to approve the minutes from the prior meeting? Uh, well, it's part of the transparency. I honestly, I, I myself haven't read them. Did we, we didn't post minutes for the last session because, um, we didn't have a quorum, right? Matt, do you happen to know if there are minutes that are still outstanding for approval? No, so the secretary takes the minutes and then they get circulated out to the chairs who then circulate them to the group. And then we vote on the minutes after the secretary takes them. Um, so no, uh, Eleanor is our secretary and she hasn't been in attendance for quite a while. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think of the last time that we even had minutes uh, to approve or if, if there's anything that's outstanding there. All right, suffice it to say, none of us have looked at something for approval, so we will table any approvals. I'll have to look into that as to... Um... I just have a comment. Like, I understand Eleanor's well, I could never clock you up and just my brains well if minutes or requires that be dealt with in the time being, no, no fall of ever, no, it's just, to me, that's procedure, so, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not sure I quite followed all of that, but I do agree Cody, that it is, you know, it's an important procedural piece. And I believe one of the things we assured Eleanor when she took on the role of secretary is that all of us are pretty capable of taking the minutes, um, you know, yeah. in the event that the the treasurer, I'm uh, sorry, the secretary can't be there. And then the alternative is to have that person take those minutes from uh, watching the recording afterwards. And um Frankly, I, I haven't looked into it or thought about what our status is right this minute, uh, but definitely it's something as a housekeeping thing um, that that needs to be a, attended to, uh, meeting to meeting, yeah. just to make sure procedurally that we're doing that. That said, because we do have the recording, you know, um, of each meeting, um, there there is that record of it. But it is nice for the public to have the bullet points. Did did I miss anything from from what you said? No, that's not my concern, so that was helpful. Uh, yes, Matt. Uh, I just want to clarify, I'm, I'm probably 99% sure that we are required by open meeting law to, to take and post minutes, like written minutes. No, no, we, so, we absolutely, yes, we are. Right, can I just finish? I, I that's yeah. part of what I, I wanted to just kind of have a, a, a process where, you know, individuals could speak and not, and not have that level of, you know, kind of speaking over. So I, I would say we, we do need to, you know, if the secretary is not in attendance at a meeting, it's pretty standard practice to ask somebody else to take minutes during that meeting so that we have that. So, you know, somebody is fulfilling that, that requirement. Thanks. That does certainly seem to be a good housekeeping practice. Um, thank you both. Okay, anything further on meetings, we will endeavor to do better or me both meetings and minutes. Okay. Um, we so, are now- uh, Go ahead, Angela. I... Yes, Angela. 
Sorry. So it, it can be um, it can be a summary of topics discussed and then a, re a reporting of the roll call votes. That would be sufficient for open meeting law. It doesn't have to be a verbatim kind of um, replay of what was said by each member, but just it, it's it's really simple to go back to the recordings and just look at the um, agenda and change the header to minutes and then recount who was present and just fill in the votes that were taken under each topic. And if things get um, moved to old business or postponed to a future meeting date, then that should be noted as part of the minutes, but it's just who's present, the topics discussed, and then the terrific job that you guys have always done with roll call votes. So that would be sufficient. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. Is there anyone who would be able to kind of take care of that for us tonight? Um, that would be super helpful. Not, not you, Christy. You, <laughs> I'm not asking you at this hour. Okay. I know. And I, I have got to go to, I'm going to give about 10 more minutes and then I've got. Thank you. Okay. I'll move this along. Go to sleep. Okay. I'd like to open this to public comment. I see that we do have James Patterson, um, attending with us this evening. If, uh, James, would you like me to un unmute you so that you can make a comment or are you just um, observing this evening? I don't know how, Angela, I would find out. Okay. So, so James, James could raise his hand, I think, if you wanted to speak yes, and be moved over to panelists. Okay. okay. So I'll, I'll move you over to uh, a panelist, James, so you can join. Hello, James, and welcome. You are on mute there. Thanks yeah, for, I'm, for joining I'm, I'm us. Sorry. I wanted to, um, I, I'm just here observing. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Yeah, this is for a class. I'm sorry. That's that's wonderful. We we used to have students drop in all, all the time when we were meeting in the library and with the renovations and everything, we lost our, our place. So thank you okay. so much for, for joining. Yeah, no problem at all. Glad to be here. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, other topics uh, are, um, we already really covered the membership update. I don't think we need to go back to that. Grant updates. Um, we have um, almost all of the uh, 2024 grants are um, about to be turned over so that they can, uh, the, the grant funding will be dispersed. Uh, Angela, thank you for your help with all of that um, to, to organize um, that, that handover. It has been a lot an electronic process, but there's there's still um, a couple of pieces for the way that the that um, Holly as the comptroller and her department um, appreciate receiving it. Okay. And moving on, um, is there anything anyone would like to ask about the grants update? No, okay. And um, is there any any business anybody would like to bring forward that we uh, did not have posted prior to this meeting? Yes, Rachel. This is not a uh, business for this meeting, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but I think maybe for a future uh, at, at our next meeting, it might be helpful just to give everybody a um, an overview, an update of where things stand and what kind of our I guess governance model is and what we as a council might need to um, sort out in terms of how we operate going forward. So kind of a, is that clear what I just said? Not, not entirely as far as I don't, I don't completely understand um, what the major shift is. I mean, we definitely need to have our, our, um, official offices filled, chair, treasurer, um, secretary, and treasurer being open is kind of a, a, a major item there, but I'm not quite sure what you'd you'd like to explore. Oh, to I guess I guess it's just basically um with Matt stepping down as co-chair and you effectively are the chair plus treasurer at this point. So I think it's the kind of functions of, you know, because what you just said about everything having gone digital. And that yeah. seems to be a relatively new thing, right? That has happened. So um, 
I guess, no, it's, I answer my own question. Sorry. Now that I've asked it. I... Okay. It, it, feel free to reach out to me one-on-one. -on -one. Happy to talk anytime. Um, Just, yeah, because I think, for example, with the um, memberships, I guess, like, so Sylvie, Eleanor, and um, Kimberly, they're all full members, right? Because they're, mm -hmm. they're adults as opposed to high school students we had in the past. So Correct. they're just, okay, got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And yeah. Um, is there anything else anyone would like to, to bring forward? Um, we, we did have, um, a topic that came up that from a procedural point of view, I'd, I'd like to just, um, bring forward and, and perhaps bring to a, a, a quick vote. And the situation was um, that one particular grantee um, had uh, decided to decline and pass on on getting their fiscal year 2024 grant for organizational reasons um, and asked us to return that to the grant pool, which is, you know, exactly what we do. And um, sometime later, that grantee came back and asked if they could have it for a segment of the grant that they applied for, but not the actual grant um, that that was application that was submitted. And what I'd like to bring to a vote procedurally is, um, are we in agreement that procedurally that you know, does not match how we um, fund grantees, um, that, that the grantees need to go through the grant process uh, with all of the other grantees, uh, and and go through the the same approval and acceptance process of of all of them, and that we are not able to to kind of modify on the on the fly it was you know kind of how it seemed to me in an email. Um, uh, is there anybody who'd like to to discuss that briefly? Again, Christy needs to hop off, so I think we need to do this quickly. Um I mean, I think I think that's a good thing to reiterate going forward, just because it's, it clarifies and gives us our boundaries, um, and it makes our job easier and more transparent. That we don't change our operating system. I mean, we could we could have a discussion and change that. I wouldn't be in favor of that i think we have procedures and we should stick to those procedures period end of sentence um so i think that that would be a good thing to get into the record that that is how we operate yeah as I, I i support that and and i do have to say that you know um when i when i joined the council when Gigi was was chair you know things really were quite a bit more rigid. And and then when we had the pandemic, everything changed for everybody all at once. And the MCC, you know, changed um, some, some of the, the, the Commonwealth wide uh, rules practices, um, for instance, uh, simple modifications can happen for a date or a venue. It doesn't necessarily all have to come, you know, have us gather a quorum and vote and that's something that I can do um, as chair with any one of you. We just need two council members to agree to some simple changes when when brought forth. And that was to not impede um, the the uh, possibility of having art and culture in the community, right? Because so many things were changing at once. But um, I think, you know, from my perspective, it's very important that Anything that's a you know major modification, um, when someone's accepted the grant, those go through, you know, a um, a an amendment request by form, and then we would bring those for a vote to uh, to, to the all of you, right? So that we can make sure that it still um, matches the the intent um, with which we granted the funds to begin with. And uh, if if someone 
declines the funds, you know, they're certainly welcome to apply again uh, the next year. And, you know, keep in mind anything from July to December um, for a fiscal year 2025 grant, uh, people can can still get uh, funds for 2024 events as long as they're happening in the second half of the year. So any other any other comments on this? Um, yeah. um, uh, might be unpopular, but if they do apply next year, you know, see, I'm torn. <laughs> because of, to me it shows they're unpredictable. Um, that good heart in me says, well, <laughs> if they apply next year, we could definitely I get them some money, but is a what if they do this again? You know, at some point, or oh, they prohibit if um apply because they. Do take away from some other great projects we could find. That that's an excellent point, and yet that goes back to what Christie's saying as far as procedure, right? If we follow the procedure, now we we can't we don't actually prevent anyone from applying. Anyone can apply, but once they come through, then they're going through the proper uh, vetting and deliberation process. And that is where, you know, and we've had this happen with grantees in the past where, you know, they either accepted the funds and didn't do their um, event or um, never never even managed to, to accept their funds and, and ask for extensions and but from a procedural point of view that's a good place for us to be because it's all of us together having that discussion around a grant application that's binding right um that's in process with all of the other grant applications and it is absolutely up to us to weigh the merits of um past uh track record uh, of um actually bringing projects to fruition and compared with what, you know, those funds, um, you know, would, if they were provided to other grantees, you know, that's, that's all of the work this, this body does. Um, so I think just, you know, really staying within, you know, the, the process is, is certainly supports all of this. And um, I'm happy to have you all with me on these decisions because we all have big hearts, but the biggest heart has to be for you know the the public benefit to to the community as as a whole, and we we do that best together. So thank you. Any any other comments? Okay, so I'd like to make a motion um, just to uh, recognize um, that who within the group. Uh, supports you know the the process that we've been using which is grants during the grant cycle the grants are either you know, rejected and they're given a chance to appeal or granted and then grants uh, are accepted contractually or were declined and then the funds would go back to the pool so um is there anyone who would second taking a motion of supporting that process I would say Okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll take a roll call of the vote, Christy. Yes. Thank you. Support. 
Thank you. Uh, Matt? Would you just say the motion again? I, what what are we, or what action are we proposing here? It's probably not an action in the way that folks who are following Robert's rules of order would put it out there. But I'm I am restating: Do you support following the process that we have in place to have grants during a grant cycle, and that we meet and deliberate that some of those grants are rejected? There's appeal, some of the rest that are approved are granted, and that grantees can either accept or decline those those funds, but that we but that once that is done, that is our process. Do you support that? I'm not sure why you mentioned Robert's rules of order, but I, I no, I don't I don't think I'm gonna support that. I don't see I don't hear any like I don't hear any action there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna decline. No. Thank you. Rachel uh, I'll support the motion. Thank you. And Cody, thank you for seconding it. Um, okay. Thank you for that, everyone. Um, and if there's nothing else, I think we can uh, reasonably adjourn the meeting. Is there any, any, any further topics, any further discussion? Okay. Thank you all. James, thanks for joining us. Uh, Angela, thanks you as well. And uh, take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. I'll end the recording. Or... Mm, I guess maybe Angela ended it. <laughs>